Hey, what's up guys? It's been a while since I last posted a video. I've um, been busy with the business. Uh, yeah, 360 exploded during pandemic. Um, I hope it stays the same next year. I hope you guys are also having the same uh, amount of clients as I am right now. So, Anyway, um, I, I wanna... Okay, this, this tutorial is about uh, distorted hotspots. So this is the example. So I had a client where I had to like create a game and stuff opens and closes. So I'm gonna show you how to do this, basically. Okay, it's I'm gonna pause along the way because I'll try to find <laughs> files and code chunks scattered all over my hard drive. So yeah, I'll. Uh, okay, let's begin. Um, to start with, um, so I'm gonna show you. Hide my face first. Hide face. Mm, this one. I'm gonna show you how to create the equi first, but I'm not gonna use the images for this 360 because uh, I can't find it anymore. Um, so let's say. So when you shoot, you already have to take the shots without moving the tripod. So for this case, I didn't move the tripod, but as you can see, stuff still moved, so you can't avoid that, but I, I didn't move the tripod here. Um, the door opened a bit, the leaves moved. Um, um, yeah, to explain, I guess, a bit as well, um, I used to, I used to have this setup. So for the other, for the example I just showed you, this one where you can zoom in a lot, I use this um, combination of camera and nodal head. Now I switch to this one and I used to shoot 6 around every 60 degrees. Now with this setup, I shoot 4 around um, at 8 millimeters here, 6 around at 12 millimeters. Um, file is bigger. But uh, it takes a while to process, and in the end, the client doesn't care. So I ended up switching to this because it's much faster to shoot and less stitching errors, much lesser stitching errors. But to show you, here's the difference in the output equirectangular image. Um, so this one is from the six around. The size is. Um, 13k and this one is taken with this new setup um, it's taking a while to open so if I put this on top of the six around so that's the difference in terms of uh, the image size but the thing is, I resized down to 6K, so it doesn't matter. This one is uh, still around 8,000 pixels. I resized down to this. Um, it's not popular. I see people staying at a minimum of 8,000 and even 10,000. But at the end of the day, it's if the client doesn't care, um, then... You know, you, you really don't have to keep the, the bigger file sizes. For me, it, this does a job and I can produce faster um, and, yeah, deliver faster for the client. Um, I'll show you the 360 of this. So it's still a 360. The only difference is when I zoom to the objects, it's not that clear, but it still does the job. Um, compared to this one I if I zoom in to the far objects I can still see some detail so yeah so it I can still read this service parts list so yeah that's the difference if the, if I, I had taken this using the port around setup I wouldn't be able to read this anymore. anyway so what I did here was took four around 
and then took another one where the chest was open. So to do this, so let's stitch this first. Let's stitch the original like 360. Um, I already this is not tutorial tutorial on PT GUI, so I assume you already know how to use this. I already have uh, templates for this for my camera setup, so I just apply it. Align images, and then I have a 360. Um, I keep it. I keep the chest at the center because I want to close open this. Um, and then yeah, I just generate the panorama, and I save this. Save. So now I have a panorama of that room. So yeah, I still have to edit this, etc. But I want another panorama where this is open and it's the same position. Well, as much as possible. So what I do is I open this, save it as a different file. So you see this. And I just replace the image where the chest is open. So the thing here sometimes um, PT GUI some does some funky blending. So I go here and I just do don't blend. So it doesn't do anything um, weird to the seams. So anyway let's view this. So this should have a chest open. Okay so the chest open um, just save this and create the panorama. So if I put this, open this in Photoshop and put that on top, the, it should be the same position. If not, I'll move it a bit in Photoshop. So it did move a bit. So yeah, maybe I'll just layer this um, I mean, it's really hard to tell the the, post, the original position but I think you, you get the idea I'll just mask this uh, the edges so this is the um, like mask to to transparent uh, that, maybe that was too much Anyway, I end up with the with the panorama where the chest is open and the chest is closed. So I'll, I'll just save this as another file. Mm, let's see how it looks. There it is, it's open. Uh, don't notice the seams. Anyway, so that I just showed you how to do that in PT GUI, but uh, for the tutorial, I didn't actually use these files. So here, what I did was uh, I had these two files from yeah my old project. This is what I showed you during the first one. So what, what we're going to do now is first show you where you can find some of the files. It is here. So go to Carepano and go to examples. They talk about it here. So yeah, the thing with Carepano is it's really flexible. It's just that if you're new, it's hard to find stuff. Um, so it is here. It is this part here. They talk about it here in this tutorial. I um, mean, this thread. Um, I'm going to show you exactly the same but I learned it here um, first thing we're gonna do um, is so let's say we already have uh, this this two 360 as equity rectangular images right it's just open closes some of this stuff so I drag this to air panel 
uh, what you call this, the care pan or meter builder. So I drag the the state where it's closed. Uh, I'll pause it for now. So it's done. Um, if I view this, I have a 360 of the room. Um, I'll edit it so that it faces that uh, this uh, chest here. Uh, start, save. Okay. Um, what's next? So where did that go? So this was the produced 360. I mean, Vitor. So if I open this, um, you should see that. So we want to put an open chest image here. So to do that, um, I go to, I open the equirectangular image in PT GUI. So many files open. Sorry about that. I go even over. Uh, Let me just look for my files. Uh, I found my files. So open the equirectangular image where you want to extract the image from. So in this case, it's this one. So I'm going to put it in, open it in PT GUI. And then switch to this mode. I'm not sure what to call that. And here projection, I switch to rectilinear and I drag this to zero. First thing I do is, um, as much as I can, is try to drag it level and not do any funky movements yet because it's, it's hard to align later. And then when I see the chest, I adjust so that I can only see the chest part. So um, here you can see that it's a bit tilted. So if I go here in image parameters, I can adjust that if I change the values here. Um, yeah, if I do zero zero, I'm sure it's well, it's still crooked. Uh, well, I already did this a while ago, so I know the values. So I'm just gonna copy it. But the thing here is. I try to keep this a whole number because I noticed if there are too many decimal values, eh, the alignment is off. So what I used was 26 here. And here for the yo, 138. And here, negative 37. And negative 9. So these are... These are so take note of these values, write it down, field of view. This doesn't matter. 26, one, negative 138, negative 137. So I had this written down already. So just create a pan. Create. Yeah, next is create a panorama. Okay, and then uh, I don't need to save it because I already saved it already. So it produces an image like this. So next thing you do is you copy this somewhere in your VTOR. I'll put it in the screen here. Blue just open. And, uh, I'll open the XML files. So the, the crucial thing here is you need to copy a piece of code from this thread, this one here. So just put it in your XML where it can be called. So yeah, just put it anywhere outside the scene. And then you need to create a hotspot here. Um, I already have the code here in my other window. So, so basically the name of the hotspot, it's a distorted hotspot. The name is blue chest open. It's distorted. Enabled is just, is it clickable or not? This can be false initially. 
capture. I'll remove this for now to explain what it does. Uh, on click, I, I'll remove this for now. Alpha is the opacity, so we need to see this, so I'll make it 1. State, I just added that. Um, I'll show you why. And then here, the save values, remember what I said, take note 26, negative 138. So if I refresh this, then yeah, I can see the chest is open. So there's an image that, that is an image that's so aligned that you don't notice it. So if I do opacity here, alpha like half. So, so you can see it's semi-opaque. Um, one thing you can do is we want. I mean, and we want to close open it. So how do we do that? Um, so well, the simplest way. Okay, let me ex explain what capture is first. So if you notice, if you drag around a three sixty image. Um, if it is enabled, you will get stuck on an object that is enabled. So like, I can drag here, drag, drag, drag. But here, I can't drag because it's enabled, right? But we want this clickable. If we did enable false here, it's not clickable. So in, in order to make it clickable, and as, but drag on top, I mean draggable, I mean you can drag around or pan around add capture pulse so it is still clickable but you can drag when you're on top of it so as you can see if we add an on click here um you can do a trace just to see it works um but i need to on turn on the debug mode Uh, console log true so that I see the messages then I press F12 to open it uh, what did I do on click because oh, this was a this is a duplicate need to erase that see it works now, so the simplest thing to do now is just to hide it. So on click, I could do set hotspot in the name, then alpha capacity zero. So it hides, but it doesn't close open. Yeah. So it doesn't do anything now. Um, if you don't want that abrupt change you can do a queen so it animates the opacity Oop. so now how do we toggle so well actually a few stuff here instead of doing blue putting that name here if i do a get name it's the same it just gets the name of the current object so this is name get name just gets that so this is still gonna work so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create an action that toggles this i'm gonna call it toggle chest and then i'm gonna add a property or attribute of a state so state is either closed or open so initially i'm gonna make it closed and then i'm gonna make the alpha zero so that it looks closed so it doesn't do anything. So it's just closed. Because the, the, the image of the open chest is here. It's just invisible. Because when I do a mouse over, you can see that right? it's it's here. Um, state, this is not a KR Pano property. I just added it. This can be anything. Um, this could be close or open. Anyway, I'll, I'll just use state. So I'm gonna create this action here. Action name. Toggle chest. And then, action. And then here, I'm gonna check 
this state if it's closed or open. Um, I'm gonna change the scope to local um, so that the variables are kept just variable names are just kept within this um, action or function. So to do that, I'm gonna add an if if get color that name uh, that state. If it's closed, this is what we're gonna do. So, if you're not familiar with an if-else, uh, you can check it on the documents. Um, the format is a bit different from other programming languages, so uh, you'll get used to it. So, if, it, it's, if the state is closed, I'm gonna clean it or set the opacity to 1 so that it opens so to do that i'm gonna set the hotspot and here i'm gonna do a color that name which just gets the name of which hotspot is being currently uh, using this action so hotspot color name which is this one uh, then alpha one and then I'm gonna change the value of this state to open. And then for the else, this is the else part. If closed, so if it is not closed, it's the code is gonna go here. If it's closed, the code is gonna go here. So we're just gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna change the alpha to zero and we're gonna do this closed. Uh, let's try it. So this should work. Uh huh. Okay, I did something wrong. Let me check. Get skull. Okay, this should be equals equals. So I can now toggle this uh, chest. So I can also tween it again um, just to remove that uh, abrupt change. Twin instead of set. Refresh. So to do that on another here, so we want to do it here again. So I'm just gonna forward it. I already have the image ready. Um, so where is it? So I, I did that pretty gooey thing again, and then I saved the, the values. So this was the produced image. I just copy it to here, and then this is the code. Almost the same, just looking at that file, and these values are different. So the thing here is we created an action that is generic enough to work for both of these. So that's why we're, we're using variables instead of hard coding. So um, let me refresh. So there you have it. So you can use this for uh, real estate, op opening refrigerators, closets, uh, drawers. But yeah, you're gonna have to have extra work when during the shoot because you're gonna create a shoot where the initial state and then you're gonna open everything. And then you can do this, then you can add text like or buttons. You can you can trigger this somewhere else, like this toggle chest. You, you can add a button outside, like a button here, like open, and then when you click that, this one's gonna open. Uh, this code is gonna be different if if you're gonna try to do that, but uh, it should be similar. Um, one thing to note. So when you look at this, so right now it's one hundred thirty-two kilobytes. Um, for me, this is still big. So you you should resize that. Um, cause um, pretty gooey. I don't think they it does some um optimization. So I'm just trying, I'm gonna try to save this for web. Let's see. 
how small it gets if I save for web and devices in Photoshop. Ah, my PC is super slow now. What's wrong with you? So, save for web. So, at high, it's it's still reduced by more than 50%. Um, video, maybe a bit too grainy. But, uh, so let's save it here. Um, hi. Uh, and to illustrate, this can be any size. So let's say, let's let's change the size to 200 pixels. This is still gonna work. Uh, it's gonna look a bit pixelated. But it will still work. So here, I'm gonna change it to the high one. Hi, hi, hi. So refresh. I don't notice it. I mean, a bit pixelated, I guess. But you're saving um, bandwidth. Uh, what if we try the smaller one? Small. Uh, I think you're gonna notice this. Yeah, that's too pixelated. But I think you get the idea. Doesn't matter how big the image is. Um, so this is more on just op optimizing your tour so that it's fast. So this was the original compared to this. It's too pixelated. Uh, that's it. I hope you learned something from me today. Uh,